the first time in my life, we were about to go sailing full time. Both Princess and I had quit our jobs, although we still had a few weeks left to do. We had time right now to position the boat so that we could cross the Indian Ocean. We were too late in the season to take advantage of the northeasterly monsoon. So the only choice was to go south first, try and catch the southeast trade winds, which meant sailing down to the southern hemisphere. So we were bound for Sumatra, and my buddy Atta joined us as crew. We anchored in Sabang Bay and flew the quarantine flag and it took us a day or two to work out how to check in. There was about five offices that we had to visit. Harbour Master, Immigration, Customs, Quarantine and then back to the Harbour Master for final clearance with a cruising permit. We even helped some local fishermen haul their sunken boat back out of the water. Arthur was complaining about his stinky cabin. Eventually, we found out why. But it must have come in over the top. Let me see, let me see. Oh, that was the only hatch that was open oh, when we were fishy. Look at that. Oh. Got hit as well. You no. didn't see it? No. I haven't seen it also. He just I thought he stank. After checking in, we motored just five miles away to a beautiful channel in between two islands. They told us it had bars and restaurants and diving, but it was Ramadan and everything was closed. At least we had the prayer five times a day to keep us company. There certainly are some challenges to sailing around Sumatra. You've got big tides, so you've got strong currents. You've got charts, which seem to be a mile off everywhere you go. In fact, we traveled over land many times, according to our charts. All three chart systems that I use all showed about the same error of one mile. Also, since the 2004 tsunami, the sea floor has lifted up in places two or three meters. And then of course, there's the weather. We navigated into a lovely lagoon and stayed a day or two and went for a snorkel. But we were quite shocked at how dead the coral was. There was a lot of coral there, but it was all dead. And it didn't take too long to discover why. Crown of Thorns starfish. These guys devastate the coral. You can see the live coral is brown and the white coral right next to it is where the starfish have been. Even though we didn't find a lot of life in this lagoon, we did come across this guy. A spectacular red cauliflower jellyfish.
I don't know what sort of intelligence these animals have, but this guy decided that we were disturbing him. He swam down under the dinghy and came up the other side just to avoid us. We were on a bit of a time schedule because we had to get back to work soon, but we were passing so many beautiful beaches. So we gave Princess the choice of which one we should spend the night. And this one turned out to be beautiful. That's her boat. <laughs> it was nothing better to do than to chill on the beach, enjoy the afternoon with a few drinks, and play in the sand. We were headed for Palau Tello for the evening, but before we could make it there, we had a very special occasion in store. Jupiter's first equator crossing. Four, three, two, one! Yay! 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 <laughs> the southern hemisphere! Woo! Cheers to Neptune! Where's, where's Neptune? Neptune's is in the bottle. <coughs> Boobie. Still in the bottle. We're going to pour this in there after we're not uh, shot in the bottle. One sip, in. one sip. One sip, and the rest goes in. So don't drink it all. Cheers, Southern Hemisphere, safety travel. In Neptune, take care of us. Take care of us. Done. 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 We'd been cruising now for over a week and we really had a hankering for some junk food. So we find this resort on Tello Island and we thought we'd stop there for the night. But when we tried to place an order, we found that it was actually booked out for a private function. But the surfer dudes were happy to have us there for a beer or two with them. Thanks guys. Here you can see that the coastal reef has risen by about two to three meters. It's now standing at least a meter clear of the water. And some of the structures make for a cool phenomenon like this blowhole. We took about 10 days to sail down the islands off the west coast of Sumatra. It's a shame we had to rush, but we had to get back to work just for one last time. We left Jupiter in the care of a local resort owner in a beautiful bay just south of Padang. We'd be back in a few weeks time and then prepare for the Indian Ocean.
Hi. Tech tip for this week. I want to tell you what I've learned about water pumps. That's the fresh water supply water pump or a salt water wash down pump, same thing. Uh, Whale or Jabsco are the common ones. Um, in Jupiter we've got two which are operational. Uh, being multi-hull, I have one water tank on this side in the hull and another one on the other side and I can just switch between which tank I use. But a little while ago we had a spate of water pump failures like even at one point we had both broken for some reason. So these are not cheap these are starting price about 150 US dollars upwards just depending on how many gallons per hour that you're looking for. Um, so I decided to take these apart and see what's going on. Inside is very simple and I found what was failing is actually I've already removed this one but it's the micro switch which is the pressure switch so the top of this membrane here will push on the switch to open it so when the pressure is sufficient in this case it's about 45 psi the switch will open and this pump will stop running I found when I put my multimeter and test the switch I find that it is broken I thought maybe this is like a custom switch and you have to buy special order or something but that's a very standard micro switch the, even the physical size fits beautifully in here I bought these I bought some from the uh, electrical shop and then I bought a whole bunch online for about four US dollars for ten so easy to replace now after a few months I found that this would burn out again so I decided on a different option instead of mucking around with these micro switches these are rated at 15 amps the pump draws a good 10 amps when it's running so these can get very hot and fail so instead I bought a standalone pressure switch off uh, AliExpress if you convert the units here it works out that it's exactly 45 psi which is what I needed for my water system and to connect it to the water system I just put a T-piece in fact I just epoxied the T-piece into the unit like that and then now you have a switch which will turn on and off the power to your water pump another problem that I was having and a reason for these failing was that the pump would cycle on and off very fast while I was using water instead of just turning on and running and turning off again Instead, it would be digger, 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 cycle on and off, on and off, on and off. And I couldn't work out why. And then after Googling, I found that I didn't have an accumulator in my water system. An accumulator is like a big sponge that absorbs the shocks of the pressures. So after I put in an accumulator and it was less than $100 to buy one, the tap would turn the tap on and the pump would run on, turn the tap off pump would turn off it was a beautiful thing uh, much less work for these switches and they don't get so hot so that's my tech tip for this week remember knowledge keeps you cruising I guess the other one's the boss yeah. oh, uh, oh. Oh, 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 oh 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 <laughs> Oh, you're so cute. Join us next week as we cross the mighty Indian Ocean.